tonight on 8 out of 10 cats, queen of comedy, Joan Rivers. Pop princess, Alexa Chung. And their team captain, Jason Manford. And facing them tonight, frankly, my dear, it's Frankie Boyle. Looking good, got one. And their team captain, Sean Locke. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Carr. Hello, and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys, and statistics. Did you know, for example, only four stuntmen have ever died during the making of a film? It was love, actually, and they took their own lives. <laughs> 31% of Britons have bathroom scales but never use them, which is a shame because bathroom scales can be a very good way to test if you're obese, especially if you're using them to weigh butter. <laughs> <laughs> and British men spend on average 22 minutes on foreplay. Of course, that is spread out between all of us <laughs> over the course of a year. <laughs> right, let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with the leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean, Gok, Frankie, what have the nation been talking about? Well, I think it has to be the transition of power where Tony Blair has stepped down as Prime Minister and Gordon Brown has quickly gone into his shoes. I personally have done very well, incredibly well, out of Tony Blair's time because I had the wisdom, about ten years ago, to place a bet at Labrooks that his last meeting will be with Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> who would also be the Governor of California. <laughs> <laughs> and I put another bet on Brown's last meeting is with uh, Dale Winton, who would be the leader of Hamas. <laughs> and then Schwarzenegger sitting there and he said, we had a wonderful fried English breakfast. Did you see that nonsense? I did Well, that. you cannot fry steroids, so you know the man... <laughs> <laughs> I watched the press conference with Brown on Wednesday and he says, I'm going to make some changes at number 10. And uh, I presume he means policy-wise, but I thought he should just make some changes to number 10, like getting rid of that door. It's been there years. Maybe change it into saloon style. Right? <laughs> <laughs> or some, some of those beads that they have to separate a news agent from his house. <laughs> you know, <they're> just... <laughs> he should stone clad it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see him slide down on a pole. <laughs> I always think Brown looks like he's just taken the head off a bear costume like that. <laughs> <laughs> he's only got one eye. Well, only one of them works. If you're going to start making people in charge who've only got one eye, why not go with the legend that is Columbo? <laughs> <laughs> How good would he be in Prime Minister's Question Time? <laughs> just one more thing. I, uh, <laughs> Mr Cameron, my wife's a great fan of yours. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was so wrong of, of Tony Blair t uh, to go out and say all his problems are based on his big mouth. I mean, you don't call your wife that in public. <laughs> He's been called uh, Bushy's poodle. I know that when they, they do play frisbee together. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Bush said, uh, uh, I've heard he's been called my poodle, but he's bigger than that. <laughs> <laughs> what, he's like a labradoodle? <laughs> Gok, you've got Gordon Brown, you've got Tony Blair. Who looks better naked? Both mingers. Both mingers? <laughs> But I would do Tony Blair, absolutely. <laughs> Tony, I know you've got your afternoons off now. <laughs> I met him on a job once. Uh, you met him on a job? <laughs> yeah. What did you say, Gok? Are you Tony Blair? <laughs> I literally spun around and he was standing there and it was like everything went really slow and there was this big light behind him. He is sexy. He is so... Like, everyone's like, oh, what? <laughs> He's going to be a, a peace envoy to the Middle East. Making that Blair. Peace envoy for the Middle East is like making Mel Gibson in charge of a Holocaust museum. <laughs> He'd certainly take an interest in the Nazi memorabilia, yeah. wouldn't he? <laughs> he might bring peace to the Middle East because he brought peace to Northern Ireland, but then he didn't bomb Belfast with uranium shells and hang Jerry Adams in a shed. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a dent in the Good Friday Agreement. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if Brown and Blair are the most talked about thing this week. <laughs> Not the most talked about, but it came in second. Tony Blair handed over power to Gordon Brown. He said, give this to David Cameron, would you? <laughs> <laughs> On Wednesday, Tony Blair finally went. At 12.30, he appeared at Prime Minister's Questions. 
At 1.30, he drove to his new home in Connaught Square. Then at 2.30, diagnosis murder, and 4.15, deal or no deal. <laughs> Jason, Joan, Alexa, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Oh, uh, Spice Girls. I'm thrilled because it's the first time they've been together in years, kind of like Paris Hilton's knees, and I got <laughs> very excited about that. <laughs> Victoria, apparently, as she's called now. I love it when <laughs> gets money. And when Victoria... <laughs> Posh came over to our country, and she thought she was going to be so terrific, and then she found out in Beverly Hills she's fat, so she came home. <laughs> Alexa, you know your pop. How yeah, old were you the first time the Spice Girls came? Um, out? Eleven or twelve, that first year of school, uh, secondary school. I didn't first go to school at eleven. <laughs> Weird. Girl power was a brilliant concept, wasn't it? It was like you know you're equal to boys, and if you're not, and if you're not treated equally, wear a boob tube and you'll be fine. And... Yeah. <laughs> I love the Spice Girls, and I love what they did with the styling. But I'm a bit concerned now that what's going to happen is is they're going to come back, try and recreate all of that again but having to wear very big supportive pants now from their <laughs> knees up above their boobs and squeeze it all in Isn't so I that think that's what your show's about yes <laughs> putting fat women in clothes that they shouldn't wear it's not what it's called tune in next week on putting fat women in clothes they shouldn't wear <laughs> what's her name uh, the one that just had the eddie murphy baby scary scary yes yeah. And now that she's nursing, I said they should call her Dairy Spice. <laughs> it turns out it was Eddie Murphy's kid. Well, it came out in a fat suit. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear this? They've got this machine that digitally enhances their voices, and I'd really like to be in charge of that machine. Especially when Posh Buy steps up to the mic, just press off. <laughs> she's going, oh! oh! <laughs> Am I the only person who's, like, really horrified by this? I mean, the only, the only way I want to see Jerry Halliwell draped in a Union Jack again would be if she dies in battle. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, let's have a look and see if the Spice Girls is there. Yes, the Spice Girls are getting back together. Sporty, baby, dozy, beaky, mick and titch. <laughs> The Spice Girls were formed after Simon Fuller put an advert in the stage asking, are you between 18 and 23 with the ability to sing and dance? No one answered, but on the way home, he did meet some girls at a bus stop. <laughs> Sean, got Frankie, what else have the world been talking about this week? Is it the big uh, storms and flooding? Because I know they had them in Yorkshire, but in Scotland we had, like, thunder and lightning storms, which I really enjoy, because during a storm I always shag my girlfriend and pretend that it's the conception of the Antichrist. <laughs> I really hope she doesn't watch this, especially because she's pregnant. <laughs> the thing I like about the reporting of the floods is there's always someone in the high street with a canoe. Mm. My question is, <laughs> where is he getting the canoe? <laughs> Just nipping the boots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you haven't got a canoe? Fuck you. There's a lot of people in Yorkshire who won speedboats on bullseye in the 80s. Um, <laughs> for years, you know, everyone's <laughs> They thought, oh, OK, he's a right prick, he's got a speedball, but now who's the winner? Glastonbury yeah. <laughs> was, was wet as well, wasn't it? <coughs> it was very muddy there. Oh, yeah. And there was trench foot, dysentery, peaches, all the Gildoff girls. <laughs> <laughs> Shirley Bassey, she had wellies on. I love <laughs> Shirley Bassey. <laughs> You like Shirley Bassey. I love Shirley Bassey. I, I thought do. she'd be a bit camp for you. <laughs> <laughs> you remind me of her, actually. <laughs> there is of a Shirley Bassey. If you had some diamonds that did wellies on, I would not know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You fucking would later on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it's one of the top five stories. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, Britain was battered by torrential storms this week. A state of emergency has been declared in Hull. It was declared in 1972 and nothing's been bloody done. <laughs> Hundreds of people have fled Wolverhampton. It wasn't raining, but they found an old bus and saw an opportunity for a better life. <laughs> Jason, Alexa and Joan, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Uh, Tom Cruise has been uh, banned from Germany. He's not allowed in Germany to make this new film. I don't know, something about the Second World War, the littlest Nazi or something. Yeah, you should be careful. He could be here. Everyone should look under their chairs. <laughs> Excellent wife that never speaks. I Watch her. her eyes. She's always blinking. SOL. Help me. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's not allowed in because he's a Scientologist. 
in Germany, Scientology is not recognised as a church. It's seen as akin to Nazism. I got a little bit angry about it at first, and then I thought, you know what, it's a made-up religion, and us Jedis, we do not get annoyed. <laughs> so. Have you considered Scientology? It's a bollocks religion. I'm going to educate. Go on. Scientology mm -hmm. asserts that we are descended from 13.5 trillion beings yeah. from an overpopulated corner of the galaxy who were dumped <laughs> in Earth's volcanoes by an evil galactic warlord called Zenu 75 million years ago. Ziggy played guitar. <laughs> That's like a David Bowie lyric, doesn't it? <laughs> it's just mental. I mean, there is absolutely no logic to it whatsoever. Yeah, but if it keeps them happy, who cares? It's when they come after you. <laughs> <laughs> How do they come after you again? Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> it's a film. It's about a guy who apparently looks like a good... Nazi. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. Klaus von Stauffenberg. Here's a piece of meat before I kill you. What's a good Nazi? Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing is so, you know, insane. It's the Nazis versus the Scientologists. I never thought I'd be on the side of Hitler. I mean, it's just <laughs> crazy. Is there no one so culturally different that the Americans won't just have him played by Tom Cruise? Like, he was the last samurai. <laughs> I'm surprised he wasn't in that fucking Muhammad Ali film. <laughs> And he, he goes over as a samurai, right, which, by definition, everyone trains when they're about five, right? He turns up aged 40 and just sort of picks it up. So you're going to be a real shock when you see Finding Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> they talk in that. <laughs> Fish. <laughs> what they're doing films these days, outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's have a look and see if Tom Cruise is up there. <laughs> Yes, this is the story that Tom Cruise has been banned from filming in Germany because of his Scientology beliefs. So the Germans are calling Scientologists evil. That's the pot calling the kettle gay. <laughs> Figures on buzzers, what else have the nation been talking about this week? I think you might remember the tennis, uh, the tennis championships being played at Wimbledon this year. Again. <laughs> Every year. <What> <laughs> the women's tournament, they're going to get paid the same as the lads for winning it for oh, the I first know. time. Venus and penis, whatever the hell their names are. <laughs> <laughs> Use a racket. I mean, they are. Gonna <laughs> They've banned people from wearing fancy dress because they're worried about fathers for justice. They've told the security to look out for uh, people dressed as Batman or Superman. But what if there's a proper emergency? What if something actually goes wrong, and Batman turns up and he can't fucking get in? That's mental. <laughs> Batman will be able to get past a three-pound twenty-an-hour security guard, or he'll be fuck all use anyway. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Wimbledon is there. Yes, Wimbledon started this week, or Timbledon, as it will never be known. <laughs> Emlyn is thinking about getting into coaching, offering discount fares to all of England's market towns. <laughs> How come Paris Hilton wasn't in? She's been all over the place, my God. What did you think of the Paris Hilton thing? She's such an asshole. I mean, she deserves it. The family were worried that going to jail would ruin her reputation. What as? Oh, a okay. cock-sucking layabout? <laughs> <laughs> they were scared she'd go on a hunger strike, so they took all her porridge and they flavoured it with uh, sperm. And she gained four pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Did she go, oh, this has got porridge in it? <laughs> <laughs> right, at the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean, Frankie and Gok have three points, Jason, Joan and Alexa have two points. <laughs> Our next round is called Pick of the Polls. Our teams take it in turns to choose a picture from the board and then answer related statistical questions. Jason, Joan and Alexa, your turn first. What do you want to go for? Uh, uh, this one in the bottom corner, <laughs> Jesus saves. That picture represents Christians, and this is a poll with a whole question. 21% okay. of born-again Christians have what? No is friends. <laughs> <laughs> I got some building work done at the beginning of the year, and it was a born-again Christian builder's company. I thought, I can trust them, they'll be all right. And he was doing some work in the kitchen, and he was sweating, and I went, no rest for the wicked. And without, without a gap, he just went, I wouldn't know, I'm one of the righteous. And just carried on. <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you're going to be finished off with, you wanker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, any extremists are crazy and ugly. Ugly. <laughs> oh, yes. I went to a born-again convention, you know, Jesus loves me. He said if he loved you so much, he would have given you a chin. I don't think Jesus loves you. It was like the thing when, like, some athlete will win a gold medal and go, oh, thanks for Jesus, Jesus helped me out in this. And you think, what kind of God lets, like, Iraq happen, doesn't do anything but keeps a close eye on who wins the triple jump? <laughs> <laughs> Technically, it's kind of cheating, isn't it? Yeah. You're using God to help you win a... It's worse than drugs. 
you're in the, if you're in the long jump and then you know that God's pitched up and gone, like <laughs> It's not fair, is it? <laughs> Something to do with a very petty crime. Have murdered. <laughs> it's, it's to do with music. That's my final clue. Have stolen CDs. I'll give you that, Joan. It's actually illegally downloaded music. Yes, 21% of born again Christians have illegally downloaded music. I've not found Jesus, but then I think he should try and find me. He's omnipotent, I'm on telly. Come on, Jesus, how tough's that? <laughs> OK, Sean Steen, what do you want to go for? I'd like the one of uh, Madonna with her head coming out of a dwarf's buttocks. <laughs> You've chosen a one upmanship question. In a poll to find out the celebrity Brits would most like to swap houses with, Madonna came second, who came top? I watched through the keyhole <laughs> when I get the opportunity. <laughs> It always do. seems to be Rusty Lee. <laughs> <laughs> big laughing cook. And she's got quite a nice house, you know. Is it Rusty Lee? No, uh, you you right. are devilishly close, Sean. Really? Have they done Madonna? Have they through? done Madonna through the keyhole? Who would, <laughs> who would live in a house with all these stolen children? <laughs> she didn't steal them, she adopted them. <laughs> what celebrity's house do you want to live in? I'd swap with um, Jamie Oliver because he's a dick, right? Oh. And um, it only says I have to swap. He'd still have to live with my mum and dad. <laughs> and they would fucking hate him. He's always spitting when he's cooking. <laughs> I'm always chopping the fucking thing. Say it, don't you spitting, man. Well, I can tell you, you're absolutely right. <laughs> right? Yes, the celebrity Brits would most like to swap houses with is Jamie Oliver. I'd like to swap houses with Jamie Oliver because I live in a soundproof box two miles underground. <laughs> so at the end of that round, it's three points for Sean's team and four points to Jason's team. <laughs> the next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I'll give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Let's have a look at a clip to illustrate the statistic. <laughs> Michael Jackson's thriller. It hasn't dated well, has it? <laughs> Here's your related statistic. More Americans own a thriller CD than own a passport. Is that true or false? I would think that more Americans would own a, a copy of Thriller than own a passport because we love souvenirs, and that's the last time you'll ever see Michael Jackson black. <laughs> <laughs> that's the ironic thing, isn't it? Because if he used the picture from Thriller on his passport, nobody would let him in the country. You're like... <laughs> Well, you don't look like that, do you, honky boy? <laughs> I'm pretty sure at passport control they're not allowed to say honky boy. <laughs> I sort of believe that, but then I believe that more Americans own a rifle than own a spoon. <laughs> Americans have got this crazy idea that people don't like them. In the the <laughs> well, nobody likes the hand that feeds you, you know? And we take care of the world, to a point. Yeah, basically, we take care of the world, yeah. <laughs> That seems to have launched something. That'll take care of that. <laughs> we also saved a lot of lives in World War II by pressing that button. Yeah, three years fucking late. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go on about it. Are you a fan of the Michael Jackson? I'm a very close friend of his still. Still? Still. You've stuck with him? Well, to a point. <laughs> My grandson is growing up, so we won't see him for a couple of years. <laughs> but, uh... We used to exchange gifts. I mean, we're that close. And every Christmas, I would give him hankies. And then one year, I realized this is stupid. He has no nose. So, um... <laughs> OK, more Americans own a Thriller CD than a passport. True or false? What are you going to go with, Sean? Um, I think it's false. What are you going to go for? True. Absolutely true. I'm going to go with that. Think? True. Well, I can tell you the answer is false. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yes, 23% of Americans have a passport, only 9% own a copy of the Thriller album. The Thriller video does have amazing special effects. In one bit, Michael Jackson looks black and kisses a girl. <laughs> so at the end of that round, it's four points for Sean's team and four points for Jason's team. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. Who's your first one? Grandparents' most annoying habit. Turning up in a porno film. <laughs> you haven't. <laughs> Wetting themselves. <laughs> Is it dying just as you become addicted to their heart tablets? <laughs> <laughs> my granddad had narcolepsy. He'd fall asleep all the time. And when we were kids, me and my brother would wait for him to fall asleep on a couch and then go upstairs, get changed, and then pretend he'd missed the day. <laughs> <laughs> when does he know that? My granddad used to drive a black cab. And he used to say to me, yeah, I drove a cab through the Blitz. And I always say to him, yeah, it's great, Grandad, but I'd be a lot proud if it had been a tank. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, who's hailing a cab during a bombing raid? <laughs> oh, it's when they go to, like, do you have Costco here where you can buy in bulk? Oh, we yeah. have, yeah, and we have cash and carry, years yeah. old, And they're buying 18 jars of mayonnaise, and you're going to go, why? You're not going to make it through the checkout counter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you the answer. Grandparents' most annoying habit is they use emotional blackmail to make you visit them. I would visit my grand more, but I can't remember where we left her. <laughs> OK. Worst fashion mistake for men. Mobile phones on belts. Absolutely, 100% the worst is when people walk around with a mobile phone on their belt and they're not an electrician. <laughs> Short shorts and low testicles. <laughs> When oh. a bit of brain comes out the side of a bikini bottom. Oh. <laughs> that is a low. Is it like a blue corduroy suit and like a, like a green and blue striper shirt with a bit of cream like there? Yeah. And like your hair combed over like to one side? Yeah. Like the 40s? <laughs> yeah. That? Especially when you've got a face like a pumpkin. <laughs> What, what do you think of uh, Frankie and Sean's outfits? I say outfits, it's just their clothes, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go for us. Tear us, rip us to shreds. I think you both look very attractive, and I'm very looking forward to going in the green room later. <laughs> well, I think we look like shop window at Specsavers, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Got classic, but socks and sandals. Correct. Uh, yeah. oh. so obvious. Yes, I can tell you the worst fashion mistake for men is socks with sandals. As a fashion statement, Socks with Sandals says I'm either a teacher, a German, or a c <laughs> Surely the worst fashion mistake was shooting Gianni Versace in the face. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Jason, Joan and Alexa have four points, Sean, Frankie and Gok are the winners with five points. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night.